post bottom inspection the inspection after that this is carried out by veterinary doctors we call them meat inspectors these people do not work for the slaughterhouse no they are assigned by government by authorities so they are not working for the slaughterhouse so what they decide is actually fair what meat should be suitable, not suitable, they can decide on the mold. Will not be influenced by the slaughterhouse. The personnel, the factory personnel must not remove any disease parts until they have been seen by the inspector. So the workers in the factory, in the slaughterhouse, should not try to remove the contaminated parts. Should let the meat inspector see so he can decide, he can identify what are the issues, what are the diseases which are suitable or not suitable. And then normally when he, he confirmed that these carcasses are suitable for human consumption, he will stamp on the carcass. You know stamp? He will make stamp on the carcass. So sometimes you buy meat in the market, you see that there are some side, color side on the skin. It's actually the stamp uh, put by the meat inspector. And then any instruction, decision by the inspector to remove or to destroy certain part must be obeyed by the slaughterhouse. So these men have actually power to decide and the slaughterhouse have to follow. And the next step is refrigeration, handling and transport of carcasses and the meat. Refrigeration of the carcasses. Refrigeration means the temperature is somehow above freezing point but below 10 degrees C. Chilling, uh, lower down the temperature. The carcasses should go into the cooler as soon as possible and should be as dry as possible. Why the carcass should be dry? Why? Because the wetness will stimulate the growth of bacteria. Okay, right. You cool it down fast and it's dry, then you can retard or lower bacterial growth, extend the shell life of the carcass. Yes, and um, what else? I forgot the microphone. Yes, and then uh, what else here? I uh, forgot what I'm doing, what I'm talking about here. Right, you chew down the carcass as soon as possible, then you can retard the bacterial growth. But here now you try to remember, we should not chew down immediately. There should be a time, a waiting time, okay? To lower down slowly, not, as, not so fast. When you lower the temperature very fast, you can reduce the growth of bacteria right away. However, if you do very fast, it will influence to the meat quality especially beef we will explain somewhere else okay later so for certain types of carcasses for certain type of animals there are should be suitable periods of time that you cool down you chew down and then the carcasses are hang on rails and never touch the floor why you should not touch the carcasses should not touch the floor because the floor is a source of contamination with dust with microorganism a lot it's not clean there so after certain steps they should be hung on uh, all the time the temperature inside the carcass must be measured with a prop thermometer not a glass because a glass thermometer can break down any time and contaminate the meat with glass broken pieces of glass this is dangerous so there's another prop, a metal prop that we can measure the temperature and not only on the surface but you have to measure the temperature inside the carcass because this is important, right? Many times that outside surface temperature is low but inside temperature is still high and this is good condition for microorganism to grow, bacteria to grow, especially what group of bacteria to grow inside? Arabic or anaerobic? Anaerobic, okay? Anaerobic bacteria means the bacteria grow without oxygen and grow inside the meat when it's still warm inside. So when we do chewing the carcasses, we should 
care of the temperature inside is more important than outside. Okay, I told you here. This is the recommendation. A general guide to chilling down the muscle down to 6 to 7 degrees C. The time should be 28 to 36 hours for beef. Okay, take this time to lower down. And 12 to 16 hours for pigs. Longer time for sheep.